What is up guys, Tim Murray here. In this tutorial we will be continuing with creating custom light shows for your MIDI fighter or launch pad. In the last tutorial I showed you how to set up your MIDI fighter for a custom light show. To see that tutorial, click here now. I will be introducing launch pad into these tutorials now as their setup is very similar to the MIDI fighter 3D. So let's jump into Ableton Live. To set up your launch pad, open up Ableton's preferences window using the drop down menu or control comma on a PC or command comma on a Mac. Navigate to the MIDI and sync tab. Firstly, unlike the MIDI Fighter 3D, we will select the launch pad as a control surface, and then select your launch pad as the input and output. This will activate the different modes on the launch pad, like the session view, the user modes, and the mixer mode. Now, like the MIDI Fighter 3D, navigate to the MIDI port section, and turn on track and remote for both the input and the output of the launch pad. This allows us to send and receive MIDI information, and also for parameter mapping, which we will need for part 3 of this tutorial. Now, we need to create a MIDI track, with the input and the output as your launch pad or MIDI fighter. Unlike the MIDI fighter 3D, we don't need to change the channel to channel 3 for lights, as the launch pad's channel for lights is just channel 1. Now, navigate to the MIDI effects tab in the browser sidebar. In this tab you will see 8 MIDI effects. These are arpeggiator, chord, MIDI effect rack, note length, pitch, random, scale, and velocity. The first one I will talk about is the most important one, the MIDI effect rack. While it doesn't actually contribute any new MIDI information to the signal, the MIDI effect rack allows us to create different effects chains and assign them to different buttons. This allows us to create a different light show for each button. It also allows us to create different banks, allowing us to have multiple light shows for the same button, which we can toggle with MIDI control, but more on that in part 3. For now we will just look at it like a folder or a router for MIDI effects. If we right click in the square here, we can create an empty chain. Now, open up the Keyzone editor on the MIDI effect rack by pressing the key button. You will see a piano roll appear with a green bar below it. The size of the green bar determines what range of MIDI notes is affected by the chain. So if you have a complex light pattern that you only want to work on one button, make the green bar one note wide, and then find the button that you want to send down that chain. If you want to have a certain area selected for some basic lights, for example single lights but with a different colour, then of course the green range can be extended. But, if you want to have two different areas with the same effect, you can't have two different green boxes on the same chain. So the workaround for this is to select the first range you want affected, then duplicating the chain by pressing Ctrl D on a PC or Command D on a Mac. Then on the duplicated track, select your second range. Also, be careful where you click when resizing the green box, as dragging on the top part will create a fade, which isn't necessarily something that you want for this application. I will leave MIDI effect racks there for now, and move on to the other effects. Pitch is a very self-explanatory effect, which allows us to increase or decrease a MIDI note by 128 semitones. This will move the light around on your launch pad or MIDI fighter. We don't have to worry about the range and lowest functions at the bottom of the effect as we can use MIDI effect racks for this, which also gives us a visual representation of the range. The velocity MIDI effect will change the colour of the light shown. Because the launch pads and the MIDI fighter's buttons are not velocity sensitive, we only have to change the out high control to change the colour, and the colour will be the same with each press. But, on a controller with velocity sensitive pads like the Ableton Push, the out high and out low values need to be the same in order to get the same colour with each press. DJ Tech Tools have supplied a picture showing what MIDI velocity values will trigger certain colours. It is a very simple and ordered layout, essentially scrolling through a colour wheel. Unfortunately for you launchpad guys, this isn't as clear, with most of the colours seemingly a bit mixed. Also, there is the inability to display the blue hue, so no blue or purple colours. Although Novation have just announced the Launchpad Mark II, which has RGB lights and a new design. While most of you will be able to find the colours you are looking for just by sweeping through with the out high knob, a few simple colour values to get you started are 127 is bright yellow, 124 is bright green, 87 is bright orange, and 67 is bright red. The chord effect will give us the ability to add 6 more MIDI notes to the signal, with the range of 36 semitones higher or lower. This allows us to create light patterns like lines and shapes. Also, if we use two chord effects, the second chord effect can add six more copies of the previous chord pattern. This is a way that we can create full lines on a launch pad. By adding plus one, plus two, and plus three on the first chord, this creates a line that illuminates four buttons. So, if we want the line to go across eight buttons, we select plus 32 on the second chord effect. 
This will duplicate the first effect and then pitch it up 32 semitones. So essentially, we can think of the chord function as a duplicator. Note that I selected plus 32 instead of plus 4. This is because of the way the launch pad is laid out. The launch pad is essentially laid out in two columns. To show you how the launch pad is laid out, I will show you visually, starting from the lowest note and going to the highest note. The next effect is where you can add a little movement to your lights. Following on from the line we made on the chord effects before, let's add an arpeggiator to it. Instantly, you will see that holding down the light to trigger the effect will cause the arpeggiator to cycle upwards through the lights. This isn't the only pattern we can do with the arpeggiator though, so opening the style drop down menu will reveal many different patterns. Up is the default style, which will obviously cycle through the lights in an upwards pattern. Down is the opposite, starting from the highest midi note going to the lowest. Up down will go from the lowest note to the highest note and back down again. Down up is the opposite. Up and down is actually different from up down. Up and down starts at the lowest note and goes to the highest, but then unlike up down it actually triggers the highest note again and travels back down the chain, finishing on the lowest note. Down and up is obviously the opposite. Converge starts from the minimum and maximum values and goes inwards, while diverge is the opposite. And lastly, chord trigger will allow you to arpeggiate with multiple notes playing at once. For the most part, just mess around with these and see what you can do, because you'll get a better understanding of all the styles that way. Now the groove menu allows you to apply swing to the arpeggiator. While I don't really use this for lights, I figured I'd tell you anyway. The offset knob controls where the sequence will start in the pattern. Rate allows you to control the speed of the arpeggiation, either in sync mode where it is tempo synced, which is what I generally use, or in free mode where you can manually select the interval time in milliseconds. Gate changes how long the light is lit for, but I would suggest always leaving this at 50% as sometimes it may be a little buggy, and there is already a MIDI effect for this, note length, which I will go over next. Repeats will determine the maximum amount that the pattern will repeat, from infinite times to 16 times. This feature, combined with this hold button, allows you to tap the button once and have a light show complete a preset amount of cycles before stopping. I generally don't bother with the transposing area of the effect, as using chord effects before the arpeggiator just seems like a better workflow, and it also allows for a little more customization. This is also the same with the velocity area of the effect, so I won't go over this part at all. Moving on to the note length effect, this will allow you to determine how long the lights stay illuminated. Generally, with this effect, I only use the length knob in free mode, and I just adjust it to my liking. This is an effect that is usually used at the end of an effects chain, but it can be placed anywhere in the chain for some pretty interesting effects. Random is an effect that, of course, selects a random note in a selected range. The choices knob selects how many notes are in the range, with one being the original MIDI note. The mode switch allows us to change between alternating and random. Random, of course, is a random selection, and alternating will cycle through the note range in a certain order. This is determined by the sign buttons. Add will make the range cycle upwards, Subtract will make the range cycle downwards, and Buy will make the range cycle upwards and downwards. Chance is the likelihood that the incoming MIDI signal will be changed by a random value. So, if you have the random MIDI effect in alternating mode, with three choices and a 100% chance rate, in front of a MIDI effect rack, you will see that on the Keyzone editor that the MIDI value changes upwards by one semitone. Hopefully, this will make you see that you can create different chains in the MIDI effect rack for each random value. So, for example, you could have it so that each time the same button is pressed, it has a different colour. Scale isn't an effect that I use for light shows at all, as basically it is an effect that is used to make any MIDI clip sound in scale, so I will not be going over this effect. This is where I will finish part 2, and in the meantime, have a play around with the MIDI effects and try combining a few of them together, and see what you come up with. In part 3, I will go over advanced MIDI effect racks for light shows, macro controls, and MIDI mapping. If there's anything in these MIDI effects that you want to further read on, or you feel I've missed something out in this explanation, feel free to leave your question as a comment below, message me on my Facebook or Twitter pages, links in the description, or have a read through the live MIDI effect reference chapter in the Ableton online manual. I have left a link to the specific MIDI effect section in the description. So thanks for watching, be sure to like this tutorial if it was helpful, subscribe for more originals, covers, tutorials and more, and as always, have a wonderful day. Timmy out.